What is up guys? It is John and we are back with another director's cut. Now this one is is a classic. <laughs> a lot of speculation, a lot of wondering what in the world happened in this video or what it what was it we were hearing. Um, first thing I'm going to say if you haven't seen the original video, I will link it in the description down below. Please go watch it first. And that way you have context for for the director's cut here, for what I'm saying. Um, a lot of people get confused and, and they see this part here and they think, your audio's off. I get a lot of comments like that. They don't realize this is, this is director's cut. This is commentary over the video. Um, this is an older video. It's a, about three years old now, I guess. Or a little more than three years old. Uh, wow, that's a long time ago. <laughs> but... As you know, if you've been with the channel, you know the story, but if you've not, I want to tell it for the people who are new to the channel or haven't seen the video. This is an area known as Cades Cove, Tennessee. It is within the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It's an 11 mile loop. Now, I've went here a couple times at night, and you're allowed to go into Cades Cove at night on foot or bicycle. You can't drive the loop like you can in the day. So this is, uh, as you see, that is my breath. That's how cold it was. It's about 23 degrees, I think, that night. It's in the low 20s. And uh, we just we elected to walk this loop. And the area we're walking here is the area, the backside. It's if you drive it, if you've ever driven Cades Cove, you start out on one side. Basically, it's a giant loop. You, you start at one point, you circle this giant loop for 11 miles, you come back at the same point. Um, you drive to the right, and you wind up coming back from the left side, if that makes sense. Um, we walked the left side. Now, this was a big rock that had been overturned by a bear. It had to be a bear scavenging for food. Um, but anyways, we, we elected to walk the left side because we had walked the right side before. Now this side over here is more, it's a, more of a dense forest. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot more bear activity. Um, at one point, it may still be this, I don't know. It was the most dense population of black bear in North America, if not the world. Black bears are not known for attacking humans unless they've been cornered. So, you know, we know that we're fairly safe because we're, we're lit up well. We make plenty of noise coming in. However, there are, there are a lot of other creatures, animals out there that, that would be more prone to attack. Um, so that made this a little scary. You know, at one point... We stop here in a moment, and you'll see us looking into a field, and we're hearing a, a big group of coyotes just going crazy. Um, you'll hear owls, you'll see deer. It's it's pretty incredible. But in this video, as we were making it, and I'm going to shut up here in just a moment and let you guys listen to to what we heard. It, it's still debated to this day. Um, Bigfoot experts say it's a Bigfoot. I don't know. I've never seen a Bigfoot. I remain kind of neutral on the Bigfoot area. I'm not so much a skeptic, but I don't necessarily believe they're around right now. But I'm fascinated with it, nevertheless. Um, so I'm going to... We're coming up on it here in a moment. I will shut up and let you hear the sounds and let you decide and then we'll talk about it for the rest of the video and talk about the experiences of this investigate or this this adventure it wasn't any investigation it was just an adventure we wanted to walk it at night because it was spooky here but i want to shut up and let you listen now coming up on something here we got a fence the old timey fence What is the hell is that? That was close. That's got me nervous. Let's go to the cabin. That ain't a bear, is it? No, that's coyote. But 
they're like right there. That expression says it all. What the hell is that? The others are howling now. I hope that whatever it is back here didn't see us and start calling for help. I'm a little unnerved. So how bad do we want to see these cabins? Yeah, for real. The cabin's right there. Yeah. Problem is, so is whatever that noise was. Yeah. How ballsy are we? Pretty right. ballsy. So, that's it. <laughs> and as you see, we're still walking to the cabin. Uh, we never heard it anymore that night. Um... I personally think it sounds like the Jurassic, the Hollywood version of a T-Rex, <laughs> like you hear in Jurassic Park. Um, some people say it could be an elk. Um, I've heard elk personally myself, and I've played lots of recordings of elk and what they sound like, and why they are some parts of that scream that that might, you know, resemble somewhat loosely an elk. I don't think it's an elk. Whatever animal it is, I think it's either something I'm not familiar with or most people are familiar with or it could be could be the Bigfoot. I mean, who knows? You know, let's be optimistic here. It could be some sort of cryptid we've never seen or it could be a bigfoot who knows now i played this at, at an event called cryptocon and I, there's all these bigfoot experts these, these guys and women who just knew they know everything about bigfoot so i'm like listen to this what do you think and they're like man that's the holy grail of bigfoot screams so i don't know there's a lot of people that say there's bigfoots in the smoky mountains um maybe someday I'll see one I've been on Bigfoot hunts before I've heard a very similar scream to this in Colorado um, I'll link that video as well uh, that one was was pretty wild um, we were actually hunting for Bigfoot that time and in an area where it recently someone had had an encounter with a so-called Bigfoot so that's that. I mean, you know, be the judge for yourself. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, I've been wanting to do a director's cut of this one for a while just because that fascinates me. That that scream is just, it makes the hair stand up on my neck thinking about it. Although I felt somewhat safe inside this house, I didn't really because I was like, whatever that is, if it wanted to barrel through one of the doors, it could. And what we did is when I went in, I, I latched the doors shut so I could just give myself uh, this false sense of security while I was inside. Um, but that's that's that, you know, that's that's the sound that we heard, and it it was creepy. And I've heard a lot of weird animal screams and growls and things and that one's right up there on top it it still baffles me this day what in the world it could have been but this area here Cades Cove um, I forget the name of the cabin we're at uh, but we move on we wind up we don't do the full loop this night um, just because it's it wound up getting so late I mean, at this point here, we're already up into like 1.30 in the morning, and that's the first cabin on the whole loop. We're like maybe two miles in of 11 miles, so we decided just to hoof it back and, and call it a night. 
Um, but we did get to another house that was pretty cool, and you'll see it here shortly. But but I love Kate's Cove. I mean, it's one of them places that it's just so beautiful. And, and it's sad, too, because, you know, although we do have this national park we can go enjoy now, um, a lot of people are displaced for it. And it is good, like, it's good that they preserved a lot of the homes, the homesteads and stuff. But it does kind of suck. They're like, you know, hey, sorry, you're out, you know. Well, you can't live here anymore. Um, that, that would suck, especially, you know, in that day and time. Now, nowadays, we, we move around a lot. We don't, we don't really have homesteads. But, oh, I forgot about this. Now, there's no reason for this to be in Cade's Cove. But there's this, there's this glowing light off in the woods. And I'll be honest with you, the way it illuminates, I, oh, I'm so glad we did this because I completely forgot about this. This was weird. It's, it reminds me of like Harry Potter. Um... I can't remember what it was called. It was like, uh, was it Patronus, I think? Something like that. It was like their glowing aura, their animal aura, or whatever you call it. I'm, I'm not a Harry Potter expert, so a lot of people is going to be like, you idiot. But that's what it made me think of, especially just now watching it. Um, but that was really bizarre, because there's no houses, power, anything in that area. That should not have been there. Um, maybe there's a hiker in the woods walking around. I don't know. I doubt it. There's not really... I'm sure there's hiking trails around here, but this is more of like a place for people to come and walk or drive through and, and stuff like that. But anyways, what I was saying, you know, Cades Cove is beautiful, and it is sad that the people got displaced out of the Smoky Mountains. But... At the same time, you know, it is what it is, so we enjoy it for what it is now. And it's a beautiful place to come. And a lot of people come here. A lot of people. I'm fortunate enough to live in this area and be able to have enjoyed it my whole life. Um, I try not to take things like this area for granted because it is, it is nice to have such a beautiful place. Um, this past year or so, though... Since the pandemic, it's just been so crowded. Like, what I feel like's happened is, you know, the pan the pandemic started and we all kind of shut down for a while, you know, early on last year, about a year ago, I guess. And we didn't know what to do. No one knew what to do. So TV and news outlets are like, hey, go to the mountains. You know, it's it's open air. You can social distance. Go on a hike. That's essentially what they said. And I just saw a weird light illuminate there in front of me. I don't think I ever noticed that before. But anyways. Um, and I think a lot of people took that as, Hey, let's go to Gatlinburg. Oh, okay, that must be a sign reflecting up ahead. Okay. <laughs> I thought we caught something here that we never caught before. But anyways, I, I just feel like a lot of people, instead of like actually going to the mountains and, and walking and going out in nature, they said, let's go to Gatlinburg. And last year, Gatlinburg was so crowded. This year, it's even worse. And a lot of people did go to some of the hiking trails. I, I give it that. You know, they go to Laurel Falls and Cataract Falls. The ones that's like, you know, a short hike families could get to. Because, you know, there's a lot of kids and stuff. Um, I feel like a lot, not as many people were like hiking Mount LeConte <laughs> or anything like that. Um, I've actually hiked Mount LeConte before. Um, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a process. It's not easy. Um, and I'm not, you know, in great physical condition by any means, but I've spent my entire life walking around mountains and stuff. So it's kind of like I'm adapted to it, I guess. Um, but if you're not used to it, it it's very hard. Um, it I mean, it not to say it wasn't hard for me. It was extremely hard to walk up that mountain. Um, but we 
took probably the longest route you could take. I went with a group of people and we started at like nine o'clock in the morning and it was 10 o'clock at night. And we came out um, and I'll give you instances here of where where we started and where we wound up just so you can, if you're familiar with the area, you know, or if you're not familiar with the area, you can use, you can use Google Maps and just kind of see for yourself how far we actually went. We started our hike at, um, it was farther than this, but this was um, Grotto Falls, okay? There's a waterfall called Grotto Falls. We didn't start at the Grotto Falls trailhead. We started at another one way before it. And it was about a two mile hike from where we started to get to Grotto Falls. We came out on Newfound Gap Parkway, uh, 441 I think it is, at Alum Cave, A-L-U-M Cave Trailhead. Um, when you look that up, I mean, we we clawed, we mapped it, like we kept track of how far we went, and it was 24 miles we hiked that day. And I'm telling you, my legs hurt so bad, my body ached, and it wasn't easy. <laughs> it was not easy at all. Um, and a lot of people were surprised to see a fat boy like me make it, you know. But I've also hiked Humphreys Peak in Flagstaff, Arizona. And, you know, you say, yeah, John, you're full of crap. But I actually have a video of that. So you, you can look that up. I mean, I did it. You know, there you can't fake that. <laughs> I was on top of that mountain. They don't have a chairlift. I didn't take a helicopter. I walked to the top of the mountain. And, boy, was it hard. That was probably the hardest physical thing I've ever done in my life, was walk to the top of Humphreys Peak. And I'm, I'm so proud of that, and it was such an accomplishment for me, you know, like overcoming the obstacle of being a bigger guy um, and making it to the top of it, that it will be part of my next tattoo, actually. So that, that'll be cool. But anyways... Um, Great Smoky Mountains, man. It's it's just one of them places. It's just I love it. I, I go here all the time. Uh, I haven't done a lot of videos here. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I have. I've filmed a lot of haunted places in the Smoky Mountains. I take that back. But I haven't actually taken time and filmed like what you can do there or anything. There's so much to do in the area that it's just. You know, maybe I'll start a small series, if not on this channel, my second channel, and my secret channel, and uh, and see what we can do there. Um, but anyways, this is the second cabin. Um, we were over at the barn. Now, I can't remember what they call those barns. Um, it's a certain style of barn, and I think we were hearing a bear kind of grunt around in the woods. Um that's what was happening while I was rambling on about hiking. <laughs> uh, I kind of trailed off there, guys. I apologize. But back to what I was saying, a lot of people came and uh, they were, the, the National Park was even kind of like, hey, you know, we got a problem here. We're getting massive erosion on these trails and around these waterfalls and stuff. Um, but they're trying to figure ways around it because it's just so popular. And it's free. It's a free national park you can come to, you know. You go to Grand Canyon, you got to pay like $30 a person or something. Maybe maybe it's less than that, but it's it's a significant amount of money, you know, just to get a family in. And really, there's a lot of trails. And there's a lot of things to do at that Grand Canyon, but most people go and they stand there. I think, I think I looked this up where someone told me the average time spent at the Grand Canyon was like seven minutes because it, it, it's true it's one of them places where you get there and you're you're dumbfounded for about five minutes you just you're just looking around like wow this is incredible and then you just kind of go now what <laughs> you know it's like what now um I don't want to walk down in it because <laughs> a lot of people die that way uh but when I was there, I was there with Tim, and we took a walk. We, we just walked uh, one of the ridge rim trails, I, I call it, 
uh, along the rim for a while and just you know it was fun we filmed it that's another video I, th I think it might be on my second channel actually but you can check that out um, if you're not subscribed to that channel you should be I'm just saying about to start pumping out some content there um, but you know it's 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 a cool national park Great Smoky Mountains is awesome a lot of treasures a lot of cool stuff to see um, you know Elkmont is an, another awesome place you got the couple dr different driving trails you can go on, and it's it's just a lot of fun. It, it's it's an awesome place, but um, to the point here, like this this night here, the creature and all that, it was a fun experience. You know, this is back early on. I'm still kind of figuring things out. Then I'm still figuring things out now, but. I was really still wet behind the ears with the camera and trying to figure out how I want to proceed with this. You know, is this YouTube thing going to turn into something? I was still kind of on this cusp. You know, I think I may have had 20,000 subscribers at the time, which was a lot, but you know, it wasn't enough to be like, oh, I'm a YouTube, you know, I'm going to do this full time. I'm going to go for this. You know, I still work a full time job. Um, had my hands have had different many pots on the fire at the time so to speak um but these these were the best days you know just just go and do it you know there's no you know there's a rhyme and reason but there is just like just this go for it mentality of, oh hey let's do it let's have some fun and you know now it's like got to kind of be a little more th thoughtful of where I go and what I do with my time because it's it, it's a big thing it's a big deal you know if I if I go somewhere and it doesn't work out it, it costs me a lot of money you know so I have to be really mindful of what I'm doing and I'm trying to always improve my content at the same time so um but it's it's fun. It's something I never thought this would be something that I do, like as as a as a job. Um, I call myself. I wouldn't call myself full time YouTuber right now because I do have, you know, my <laughs> that cracked me up. Um, I do have other things going on, you know, in, in my life financially stuff like that. So. You know, but it is, it is a big part of it. It is a big part of my life, and I love it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I love doing this. I love, I love the spooky vibes. I love going on adventures, and that's something I really want to do more of is go on adventures. Um, that's the barn I was talking about, guys. Um, there's a name for it. Um, I'm trying to think of it. Some of you are probably like, you idiot, you're from there. You don't even know what it is. Um, I don't know. I, I can't think. I'm trying to think right now. Um, wait, wait. Cantilever. That's it. Cantilever Barn. Sorry it took me so long to think of that. But yeah, that's. it's like you got kind of like these pedestals in the barn. Itself's bigger than the base, you know. And then look at this old wagon. Like, isn't that cool? Like, all this stuff was, like, left behind, so the, the national park's like, you know, let's preserve this. Let's restore a lot of these things. And they did. And it's awesome. It's cool that they restored and they, they kind of maintain this stuff. But that's that's it. You know, so we're, we're coming up on the last couple minutes of the video here. And I just, I just want to take this time to say, you know, I know it's been a minute since I've done director's cuts. I want to try to continue these weekly um, on Sundays, like you get today. Um, I know there's still a big half and half out there, people who love them, people who hate them. Um, but if, long as there's some of you who like these, I'll continue to do them. Just because, you know, if you've been around the channel a while, it's, you know, I know when I'm watching someone else, I like to see, you know, more details, more more insight about things. So, um, 
I will keep doing these. Uh, I got if you have one in mind that you would like to see me do a director's cut on, please comment and let me know. Um, I'm trying to stay at least two or three years back. You know, just give them give some time, some separation between the videos, because it is fun to go back two or three years in time and be like, whoa. I forgot a lot of this and it just brings back these memories and these these director's cuts I do them a lot for myself too because it does take me back to to these times when we did this and I don't know what the heck just happened here I have no idea that was that's weird must have been an editing flaw on myself um, but anyways yeah guys I really do appreciate you all watching um you guys are so supportive on everything i do and i just really gratefully appreciate all of your support and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing i got tons of spooky content and if you're part of the channel and consider joining memberships and patreon i will be putting a lot of content coming up here in the near future on both of those as well as on the memberships I will be having a you know members only chat where we can uh, discuss and talk and just you know whatever you can say whatever you want and we'll chat about it but uh, yeah consider that guys it, it helps fuel these adventures it helps me to continue fuel the free content for those who who can support and want to support and I do gratefully appreciate it and use that towards the future adventures and again thank you guys I love you and don't forget to stay spooky my friends